Cause I'll be there for you Cause we care for you You're there for me too My friend I know it's hard sometimes When you feel left behind Tell me what's on your mind Why do this on your own Yeah uh, hello, welcome to Johnny's Chats. I'm here with Kate Atkinson, yoga teacher. How are you? Really good. Thanks for having me, John. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. All right, if we want to start, would you like to tell us a bit about what you do, how you got into it, a bit about your, your journey sort of thing? Love to. Um, I've been a yoga teacher, a trained yoga teacher for over 20 years. Yeah. But I've been doing yoga myself since I was about 19 at university. And... Uh, my friend Anne said, come along. It was Albany Empire in South London, in Deptford in South London. She said, come along to a class. We went into this yoga class. I remember looking around at people, fell in love with the teacher. It was amazing. And um, we left and she said, oh, my God, that was awful. And I, that, I just hated it. And I was completely in love. And I just went back by myself every week. And that was the start of my journey. I, yeah. I suppose I went to India because of the yoga. I um, spent three years in India did yoga but hung out worked with the Dalai or worked with Mother Teresa wow. um, hung out in Masala where the Dalai Lama lives did yeah. lots of amazing things I think all based on starting yoga yeah fair play fair play what did you learn from your journey with yoga um I think I'm still learning a lot oh, of course I think yeah. um it, it's a lifelong commitment. I don't think we can, in one lifetime, learn everything. And I think that's what I like about it. It's a, it's a continual evolution. It's a continual journey. Yeah. Um, for me, it grounds me. Um, it kind of grounds me in my body, in the moment. I think I, I can't imagine how life would have been without doing yoga. Of course, yeah. I've done yeah. it every day since I was 19. Wow. Um, well, how, well, a gentleman should never ask a lady. I, I don't do a lot. I don't think, you know, often people don't do yoga because they think you have to do hours of it. You're just a few minutes. Yoga, yeah. meditation can just set the day off really well. So you do it every morning sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Cool. And uh, you, well, when we were talking earlier, you said um, something. You said being in the body leads to good health. Does does the, the journey through yoga, does it take you more into your body, like more into yourself sort of thing? Like, yeah, I'd say so. I think a lot of us have shame about our body. Yeah. Um, and I think when you come onto your yoga mat, you, and it's probably you get it through sport as well, I'd say. It's not just yoga, but for me, yoga's been my, my journey. I think when you come onto your yoga mat, you come into your body, you... You start. You stop criticizing your body or comparing yourself to others. You start to recognize what a miracle your own body is, and, yeah, yeah. and you are, our bodies are vehicle through life. Yeah. So if we're looking after, we wouldn't look. We wouldn't abuse the car in the way we abuse our bodies. You know, yeah. we take the car for an MOT every year. We have it serviced. Um, we pump up the tires. We put good petrol in. It's a bit like that with our body. I think you, yoga allows you to stretch out your body, um, acknowledge weaknesses, work with weaknesses, but learn to feed your, yourself well, to stay hydrated, all those things that keep us healthy, physically yeah. and mentally. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so it's uh, something you've implemented in order to maintain a ment mentally healthy well-being sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I know on days when I feel really low, it can be the last thing I feel like doing. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, days when I feel fantastic, it's the, it's the most amazing thing. Yeah. Um, but I've long enough now, I know, just get on the mat, just what, whatever I do. And I yeah. have, I tend to do a similar thing each day so I don't have to think about it. Or I always start off in a similar way. Yeah. So I just come onto my mat. It's called salutation or surya namaskar. And I just do those set movements. So, I, you know, I just know what I'm going to do. And then it might lead to something else or that might be enough for that day. 
Yeah, cool, cool. Well, it's obviously something that you're very well trained in. Obviously, if you're teaching other people, but it's something that you have. If you once you learn it, like off of other people, and then you can also implement it as your daily routine, sort of thing. Oh, like okay. you, you could do it. What's that? Sorry. Sorry, say that again, John. The we lost connection a bit. I didn't quite hear. Oh, what you said. okay. Yeah, as in like it's something that well, but initially you learn off other people, but it's something that you can implement yourself once you know the basics or the techniques that you can put it into your daily routine, sort of thing. Absolutely, and that's always my intention when I teach is to is is to teach in a way that I'm giving tools to people. Of course, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You're absolutely, and I often say, you know. If this works for you, put it in your back pocket, use it, whether it's breath or a stretch that you really liked or a yoga pose that just makes you feel fantastic. I yeah. always say to people, no, use that. It's not my, it, yoga doesn't belong to me as a teacher or to a you know, yogi on a mountain in India. It, it belongs to everybody. Of course. Take it, use it. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, it's a tradition that's been used for well for thousands of years, I suppose, isn't it? Like where where people like maintain it and where it comes from and all that. Or yeah, what's what's what is the history behind yoga? Yeah. Um, so people have been practicing yoga that we can sort of scientifically prove, if you like, for at least five thousand years. Started wow. off uh, in. Uh, Tibet probably and then came through the Himalayas into India. Um, the seminal text of yoga is um, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. There's no mention of any yoga postures. It's all about where your head goes in order to live well. So really it's all about mental health. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the Western world these days we're very caught in postures um, and often Sorry, the philosophy Sorry, cut out there. Often in the West, yeah, yeah, you keep cutting out a bit. Um, where do you want me to go back to? You said it was... Often uh, in the Western world. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the, in, in the Western world, we tend to focus on the postures. On the postures, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, yeah, we talk about the, the, the sort of philosophy of yoga, which is the part that can particularly help with mental health. You know, an encouragement to to think well, to think right thoughts, and to uh, recognise your own ig ignorances, um, and to keep your body and, and where you live clean and tidy. Just such simple um, advice. And th th there's the yamas and niyamas, which are a bit like the Ten Commandments. Okay. Just ways to live life well. Yeah, that's good. That's good stuff. You know, they've been around years so you know, five thousand years ago people were still advised to you know, to stretch to breathe well to keep where they live clean and tidy yeah. to harmonize with nature all the things that we're still yeah. really struggling with i think yeah in, in essence so simple yeah exactly like, we don't feel great, yeah we don't do them it's like when you focus on your breath it almost brings in that gratitude and that self-love to even have the benefit of like this magic of breathing that keeps us alive you know we all do it without thinking and if you focus on it and find the magic in it you know it's really beneficial definitely definitely yeah that's yeah. beautifully put John the magic of the breath I'm gonna take that that's yeah, yeah. you, you <laughs> really hit the nail on the head that just encapsulates yes, you know, the um, magic of the breath definitely definitely you know we're both smiling when we connect to the magic of life yeah 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 just you and i both having a body what a miracle 100 yeah definitely 100 percent. that's it uh yeah um i want to, I want to go back to something you're saying how like this uh what, through yoga you found like self-love for the body for everything the functions and everything and you mentioned diet as well like what did that mean like through that did you change your diet did you what was your diet like before and after well, initiating yoga um i'll be honest when i was um late teens i was anorexic for a long time oh wow so for me it's not particularly an advocate i wouldn't ever advocate vegetarianism or veganism I think it's great but yeah. I think we all have choice about what we eat so for me it's um, about eating healthily about yeah. listening to my body you know, after being anorexic for years it was a real negation of 
of food you know we all need fuel we all need food yeah. um so for me it was really um you have to recognize what self-love is and and um you know, even after yeah i haven't i wouldn't say i think if you have mental whatever your mental health issue is it kind of stays with you so yeah. i know i still have to be careful if i get really stressed at the beginning of lockdown for example i lost all my work i was really stressed yeah. and then i just noticed that i was losing weight and and so i you know i know that that's my sort of achilles heel and i have to be really careful and kind of, kind of come back into an equilibrium even if i don't feel hungry or i don't feel like eating you know respect myself and 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 um you know and eat yeah, um cool. so that's yeah, and yeah. and vegetarian can be or vegetarianism can be part of um yoga but i personally think we need to to have choice yeah of course and, yeah. and you just to, to have this dialogue have conversations and think about what we're eating and what, what what our body actually needs yeah yeah um, yeah i mean like we're always we're in constant communication with our body our body gives us signs and it's its way of communicating with us and we've got to pick up on that so it's turning what initially would have been a negative into a positive you know like might have had mm. problems like with eating before but positive is now you're aware of it and you know what you've got to do to maintain like a healthy lifestyle you know it's like yeah 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 definitely. yeah yeah, hundred. Yeah, you mentioned about lockdown and how well. What do you think is like on the bigger picture of everything that's going on? You know, like like everybody like there's a lot more people struggling with mental health, like and everything. You know, like losing jobs. Obviously, it's going to cause stress and all that sort of stuff. But what what to you? What what's the bigger picture? What do you think's going on? Well taking it to the absolute, um, uh, the widest what's going on, I'd like to think that it's the end of capitalism. Okay. It's the end of our fascination with money. It's the end of our exploitation of the planet, um, of, of other sentient beings, of, of, of ourselves as human beings. Um, but on a more um, micro level, I think it's a deep opportunity to just spend time just being with ourselves and really assessing what gives meaning to our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wonder if when we were on our treadmill and, you know, doing our thing and, um, you know, uh, spending lots of money, going out a lot, buying loads of stuff to kind of give meaning to our lives, all that's been taken away. And yeah. I think now we have a, a profound opportunity to question what gives meaning to my life. Um, in the Buddhist tradition, they say that we are healthier and happier when our lives have meaning. Of course. And I, yeah, and I think if we can just ask ourselves, what gives me meaning? And it, it doesn't have to be something massively profound. I don't know if you can see I've got the dog beside me. Maybe your dog gives your life meaning. Yeah. Maybe spending time in nature, maybe um, ideally our work should give us meaning. Maybe doing these podcasts for you has just given your, you know, your life meaning. It's a fantastic thing that you're doing. Thank, um, you. Thank you very much. So I, I think finding our meaning, making, um, we live, you're making, finding meaning in a meaningless world. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we've all, hopefully we've come to the it, this is my political views. Hopefully, we're coming to the end of capitalism, yeah. which is meaningless. Money, meaningless. We all know that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So that's my my take on uh, on lockdown yeah, today. Right. It might change yeah. tomorrow, but that's my take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like like you said, it's an opportunity for us to work on ourselves and and yeah find meaning and purpose definitely because a lot of the time well i do believe that when we're born we're born with purpose you know like we like a child always has dreams of what they want to be but you know like as we get older we get more doors shut on us and like well i saw something the other day that in by the time a child reaches i think i can't remember like 20 18 20 years old they've heard no fifteen thousand times and yes only five thousand times you know so like it's like getting back to ourselves and finding that deeper purpose for well collectively it might be 
like you said, like changed in times and going into like a, like a world of healing and uh, you know unity and yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, Kate. And, uh, that I look forward to. Thank you very much. I look forward to hearing from you and uh, seeing you on your journey. And let's see where this journey takes us. Yeah. Is yeah. Any... Thank you. Thank you ever so much for having me. Bless. Is there anything out that you'd like to say to anybody struggling? Like reach out or uh, any bits of yeah, advice? reach out. Um, reach out. Come and do some yoga. All my classes are on Zoom. Um, I know John that you've interviewed other local people and. You know, obviously this is going out, so local doesn't really apply now. Local can be global. Yeah, um, yeah you know, reach out. There's lots and lots of fantastic stuff going on. Yeah. Turn the radio off. Turn, Get rid of the paper. You know, there's lots of good stuff going on. Yeah, Don't definitely. focus on the negative. Seek out the good stuff. Like you said, John, come into the magic of your breath, and then suddenly you start to appreciate things, and you're grateful for everything you've got. 100% definitely definitely all right yeah well uh thank you again Kate and um yeah we'll be in touch I'll, I'll leave your link yeah, on thank you, the bio if anybody wants to reach out to you and uh, we'll go from there all right I'll uh, stop recording now because I'll be there for you because we care for you you're there for me too my friend I know it's hard sometimes when you feel left behind Tell me what's on your mind Why do this on your own, yeah Cause I'll be there for Cause I'll be there for You, my friend Cause I'll be there for you Cause you're there for me too Oh yeah, there for